Hey everyone, and welcome to RPG Horror Stories with D&D Doge. In today's episode, we have a story about a bard player that takes playing the bard stereotype to a whole new level. A story about a dungeon master that has a certain view about all orcs in Dungeons and Dragons, and more. But first, to help get us ready for the cringe, let's meditate right quick with Simba. There we go. Now I think we are ready for some D&D horror stories. The Ballad of Adrian Strange by Reddit user Eldritch Fluids. Epic story about why I thoroughly interview people before I offer them a player slot at my table. This was a few years back, 2017 to 2018 approximately, and mainly took place via Discord in Roll20. I run weekly sessions every Sunday for about four hours and had an opening for a fifth player. We get this guy, we'll call him Revan or Samurai J for no particular reason, who asks if he can roll up a bard, and I say sure. So we get this tiefling lore bard, and he joins the group just as they are leaving on a short journey west. The quest being that there are some rangers and fighters who are manning a western fort on the edge of our friendly faction territory. The quest is to go to the fort, relay the order to the captain there to recall the men to the safety of the nearest town. On the way, they scrap some beasties, but mainly the encounter is a social one, with the captain that they need to talk to being a domineering sugar mommy type personality who successfully seduces the cleric into her furs. If I had only seen the gleam in Adrian's eyes, but alas, I could not see his in-real-life face. The session ends when the group returns to town, and during downtime, Adrian asks if he can play at the inn and attempt to both make some coin and to play well enough to attract a partner. I get him to roll performance, and he rolls a 32. It was a crit success, so the player asks if he can put on a song in real life. I agree and he plays Happy by Pharrell Williams. I had to shut him down, almost instantly, because it was so immersion-breaking. Despite his crap music taste, a 32 is a 32, so in essence, he cleans the tavern out of their hard-earned silver and gets some hussy to fall head over heels for him. The players believe this hussy is part of a local witch's coven, but their suspicions have not fully been validated yet, so they don't say anything. In fact, they use Adrian as bait to see if she tries anything on him, but she doesn't because it was a 32. She is in fact quite taken by his talents. The player proceeds to take her back to her house, finds her elderly mother and aunt knitting by the fire. They're witches, twins, mid-level BBEGs for later, based on Madame Therese Defarge from A Tale of Two Cities. He asks if he can seduce them all, and with a cringe, I allow it, but with disadvantage because the creepy incest, and I make him roll once for each NPC. Though, he nails the rolls again, both being plus 20, even with disadvantage. And then suddenly, we hear it. It, the dreaded sound, the last sound you should hear on any Discord voice call. The Zipping of a Zipper I begin to receive private messages from other players, saying, Dude, did you hear that? No! The next sound is worse. The rattling of a computer chair, as if someone is having a seizure in the chair. He then begins to graphically describe the ensuing encounter, but as soon as he does, I interrupt by saying, Alrighty then, fade to black. The player loses it, screaming, No, I was just getting started. You said this was a game with mature themes. I reply with, Yes, I did. But mature themes does not mean that we will sit with you while you boil off a handful of coconut oil. I then kicked him. Two years later, he tries to rejoin, and I had to remind him of his sins. So, yeah. I interview players now. Holy crap, 
ew. What the hell is wrong with some people? Just because a game has mature themes doesn't mean you can just whip it out and do a fap session during a game with other players. I mean, if that was something that this player was into for some reason, wait until after the session, not during it while on voice call with other players. I mean, who was this player? Jeffrey Tubin? I don't blame OP for kicking this dude immediately, and now fully vetting players before they join us games from now on. Seriously, what is wrong with some people? Let's move on. Dumbass Dungeon Master Ruined My Character's Backstory and the Campaign by Reddit user Blood of the Dragon. So I was playing in my usual D&D group a couple months ago. Our group's that guy ended up DMing. We were concerned, but couldn't really complain since our forever DM was burnt out and that guy already had a campaign in the wings. I rolled up an orc and wanted to play a fighter and the Dungeon Master said, Orcs are uncivilized, so they can't be fighters. They have to either be druids or barbarians if you want to go that route. This was after he told us that we can create our own homelands and cultures for our characters. I felt that this was railroady, and it gave me second thoughts about this campaign. But I didn't listen to my gut like I should have. I accepted it, and chose to be a barbarian. I then asked him if there was anything else about orcs that I needed to know for this campaign, but he said, Not that I can think of. So we started playing in this small human elf town. I met the other party members at the typical tavern intro, when my presence in the tavern becomes noticeably bothersome to the NPCs. A couple of guys approach us and say, We don't take too kindly to you people around here, as they begin drawing their weapons. And now we're in combat with a bunch of drunks who hate orcs. This would have been interesting if we didn't walk out of the tavern and go down the street to check out the shops and were greeted with the same level of hostility, all because I was an orc. By the end of this first session, we had left the town without a quest and leveled up due to all the randos we had to kill that attacked us. After the session, we all had some good food, but the dungeon master did say, I'm surprised you haven't murdered more people yet, Mr. Orc, as he laughed. The next few sessions took place in the wilderness. We ended up finding out about some secret dungeon in Session 3 and explored it. And by exploring it, I mean the Dungeon Master railroaded us through it because he didn't prepare any rooms that we weren't supposed to explore. We found a rusted magic sword that needed its power restored to reveal a secret to the party. So we left and went to the city. My character wore a hood and kind of kept his head down to avoid any orc haters that might attack us, but unfortunately that was not enough. The dungeon master had me roll a stealth check, and to be fair, I did roll a 4, so people started seeing that I was an orc. Men looked at me with hate, and women looked at me with fear, but no one attacked us, yet. So we ended up going to the city's temple, where two Holy Order knights stopped us and said that they would not allow, quote, that vile orc, into the temple, where he could get his hands on the good women of the city. At this point, I started thinking, oh crap, he's going there with this. So I had my character sort of defend himself to make it clear that my character is not like that. I asked what that comment was supposed to mean and the guards then angrily said, You savages are a threat to all women you encounter. Go on, get. We don't want a bunch of half-orcs running around in nine months. Now, I stupidly assumed that this was still just in-game prejudiced people, so I had my character explain himself by saying, I wish you wouldn't make such a crass assumption about my people. I am a family man with a wife, a human wife, and two half-orc daughters, born from our loving marriage. I would fight to the death to protect the women of the city, so enough with your foolish assumptions. The dungeon master then told me to roll a deception check. I looked at him confused as to why he would have me roll deception. Everything I just said was true and part of my backstory that I sent to the dungeon master, which to be clear, 
He looked at for two seconds before saying, Yeah, I'm not reading all of that. Dungeon Master then just kind of laughed and said, What did you put in your backstory? This isn't Shrek. The big green monster doesn't, quote, fall in love with the human. I then am feeling kind of pissed off, but still trying to hold back. So I ask him, So let me get this straight. I make an orc, specifically asked what I need to know about orcs in this homebrew, you don't say anything, and now you tell me that orcs can only reproduce through SA. Dungeon Master then said, It's not homebrew. This is literally just how orcs are in any edition of D&D. You're lucky I even let you play as one. Most of the time, they are just a monster archetype. I tell him that orcs haven't been these one-dimensional SA and murder monsters for a while now, and even provide sources, but the Dungeon Master just brushes me off and says, This is BS. All of this is late 5e lore, added after the company went woke. And I ain't playing woke D&D. I am now getting heated, and I tell him that this has been the lore for a while, even before the whole 2020 woke D&D discourse, and I explain that it was never canon, even before 5e, that half-orcs were all products of SA. It was more of an assumption. And that that wouldn't even make logical sense for all orcs to be like that. My arguments fell on deaf ears, as the Dungeon Master refuses to listen, as he is getting mad too, and just says, Look, I'm not trying to argue. I'm the DM here. No human woman is willingly going to have sex with an orc. Get over it. You should have thought about that before you played as one. If you want, I can have these knights kill you on the spot, and you can roll up a new character. But at this point, my desire to play D&D had completely evaporated, so I just said, Fine, kill him then. What she did, and then there was a kind of pause, as no one knew what to do from there, after that awkward exchange and obvious tension in the air. DM just called it for the night, and we went home, upon which I informed the DM that I would not be playing in this campaign. About a month later, the campaign sort of fell apart, as the DM sucked, clearly, as he had a tendency to railroad the players. He was also lazy as hell, but he had some interesting lore bits, so our forever DM decided to retire his character and pick up the campaign, and it improved dramatically. Bad DM had also rolled up a new character, but left the campaign shortly after, because he felt that the forever DM was ruining his lore. He also let slip that he blamed me for why the campaign ended. A couple weeks later, I got over my own frustrations with how that campaign went, and rejoined as a tiefling cleric. Now, if the Dungeon Master was going to make the orcs in his world that way, why didn't he say anything to OP about it when asked if there was anything else he needed to know about orcs, while OP was making his character? Plus, I can understand having some themes of prejudice in games of D&D, and making that something that the players have to deal with on occasion, but this Dungeon Master just made it be everywhere for OP, which I can imagine getting old real quick. Now, as far as how orcs were portrayed back in the day, I haven't a clue, since I didn't start playing until 5th edition. But even still, it's not something you have to make canon. I would say that it was probably for the best that OP just stepped away at that point, as it sounded like the campaign really wasn't enjoyable for anyone. But it is good to hear that the old Dungeon Master was able to salvage it, and that OP rejoined and things are going good now. Let's move on. The horror without horror, or danger, or tension, or plot, or excitement. By Reddit user, Horny But Tired. Lo, these many years ago, I used to hang out at my friendly local game store. I gamed with my own group away from the store, but I also gamed with people at the store on a fairly regular basis. I've talked about some of the weird characters that hung out there before, and this story is about one of them, and her very weird D&D game. Obviously, I don't remember exact dialogue from that far back, but I'll give you the gist. Smokey, as I'll call her, was someone I'd gamed with occasionally, both at the store and away from it. 
She only played D&D, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition back then, and never seemed very involved. As a player, she stared into space a lot, forgot her character's abilities, seemed annoyed any time she was called upon to take an action in combat, and her roleplay interactions were rare and brief. So I was shocked when one day, while chatting with her at the store, she said she was planning to run a D&D game that evening. She even seemed mildly excited. It was the most emotion I'd ever seen out of her. Anyway, a few hours later, me and a few others were sitting there, with Smokey behind her GM screen. We had our characters and were ready for adventure. That, however, is not what Smokey gave us. Smokey told us that our characters were dispatched by the king, as emissaries to the Queen of the Elves, deep in the fairy forest. What's the message? One player asked. Does the king need the elf's queen help against an enemy or something? Smokey looked horrified. No, nothing like that. It's just a message of goodwill. Hmm, okay. But we were chosen because the way is dangerous, right? Another player asked. I mean, you made us all 7th level. We're pretty impressive. Smokey seemed annoyed and said, No, no, it's a fairy forest. It's perfectly safe. Puzzling. We got underway regardless, sure that some wrinkle would come up, like orcs infiltrating the fairy forest or some such nonsense. But what we got instead was painstakingly detailed roleplay of days of traveling through, as advertised, a perfectly safe forest. There weren't even roles for random encounters, just Smokey asking us repeatedly, What do you do now? And us answering in some variation of, Keep traveling, I guess. After hours of this, during which everyone was becoming restless, we finally arrived at the court of the Queen of the Elves. Surely, now things were going to heat up. We figured maybe there was court intrigue, or that the Queen would request help with something, or even that she would imprison us. Something, surely. That's when Smokey starts describing our entrance to the court. Not just the court. She starts describing what we, the players, are doing. Some people objected to this as taking over of our characters, to what she replied, It's what you would do. You know the etiquette. So we got to listen to our actions narrated to us for like an hour, while Smokey waxed poetic about the Court of the Elves. When we were finally allowed to play our own characters again, we tried talking to the Queen, asking how things were in her court, fishing for adventure, basically. All of these inquiries were met with curt non-responses, and Smokey asking with increasing annoyance, So, what do you do now? Finally, someone said, We delivered the message. My character retires to the guest quarters and goes to bed. Everyone else kind of nodded and agreed, and we all went to sleep. At which point, Smokey declares the session is over and asks us, with more enthusiasm than I'd ever seen her show, how we liked it. I didn't know what to say. I don't think anyone did. General Southern Manners kicked in, and we all muttered our thanks for running the game and started to pack up. I saw Smokey a little while after that, days or maybe a week or so, if I recall correctly. She seemed pleased and said how much fun it was to run a game for a change. I then asked, with some hesitation, if she planned on running one again. No, she said, I think I got it out of my system. Now, I know some people like roleplay heavy games, but this sounded like it was a bit over the top. It seemed like Smokey just wanted to see what it was like behind the DM screen, but didn't want to deal with any combat encounters. Now, don't get me wrong, sessions where there is no combat and just roleplay are fine. Heck, in my current campaign, we can go a few sessions without combat and we all still love it. But to do what was essentially a one-shot without any combat is basically the players just sitting down and listening to a story be told to them. So maybe it's good that this got dungeon mastering out of her system, as I can't imagine wanting to play in any of her games after that one. But that is all I have for you today. As always, I appreciate all of you, and hope that you like and subscribe. 
Until next time.